talk is going to be about uh, statistical witness indistinguishability and more uh, in two messages by uh, Yael Tauman Kalai, Dakshita Kurana, and uh, Amit Sai, and uh, Yael will be giving the talk. Okay. So, uh, thank you very much. I first wanted to start by saying that Dakshita should have come here and presented the talk. Unfortunately for you, uh, she couldn't make it. She's a great speaker. Uh, but you can make it to Israel, so uh, you're stuck with me. So uh, let's begin. So uh, what we show, so this is joint work with Dakshita and Amit Sahai, and what we show in this work is how to construct statistically witness and distinguishable arguments and more uh, with two messages. Okay, so let's start. Okay, interactive proofs, they're wonderful. Okay, interactive proofs are really great. Why are they so great? Because you know they allow us to do zero knowledge. That's really uh, fantastic. This was shown uh, by Goldachman Khan in Big Zone. We can do zero knowledge proof for all of NP. Okay. Moreover, so zero knowledge proofs have only computational zero knowledge. So you need to be bounded in order not to learn. But we know that we can even do statistical zero knowledge. So even if you're all powerful, you still can't learn anything. Okay. Uh, however. Uh, know that to get statistical zero knowledge, we need to relax uh, the, uh, from interactive proof to interactive arguments. Okay, so uh, uh, in an, uh, look, uh, interactive proofs, you're sound against unbounded cheating proofers, whereas in interactive arguments, the soundness condition is only against bounded, computationally bounded cheating proofers. So if you're willing to rely only on computational soundness, you can get statistical uh, zero knowledge for all of NP. Fabulous. What do we want to do, though? So th this is fantastic. The only problem is it requires interaction. In the focus of this work and in of previous work, we we'll try to reduce the amount of interaction uh, needed. Wow, this clicker is not for me. OK, so uh, uh, what's our goal? Our goal is to take to construct a two message protocol with secrecy. Okay, so we want to, and the way we go about this is we say, you know what, suppose we have an interactive protocol that offers secrecy. Can we convert it into a two-message protocol while still preserving secrecy? This is the question we ask. So kind of in spirit, kind of similar to, to the previous talk. Uh, and the focus of this work, though, as opposed to previous talk, is on statistical secrecy. So we want secrecy even against an all-powerful uh, che cheater who tries to learn information. And why do we care about a statistical secrecy? Well, there's many reasons, but one of them is, you know, once you have the protocol, it can be out there forever. And, uh, you know, so you really want, in a sense, to have this everlasting security. If you have statistical, statistical uh, secrecy, then your guarantee is, even if it's sitting there forever, this uh, transcript, nobody can learn information. Okay, this is kind of in contrast to soundness, where you need to be kind of online in order to cheat. So you can always time out if, you take, if uh, the cheating prover uh, takes too long. So that's the motivation of, of trying to get statistical secrecy. And loosely speaking, what we show is we construct uh, a two-message argument system, so computationally soundproof, uh, for NP uh, with statistical secrecy. What do I mean by secrecy? So we get witness indistinguishability and more. And I'll, I'll say a little bit about the more at the end of the talk. But for the most, m think of WI. Uh, and that's under relatively standard assumptions. Uh, the only reason it's kind of DDH or product residuosity or nth residuosity or OT uh, more generally, but we need slightly super polynomial uh, security. And I'll, I'll get to that. So think of quasi poly uh, uh, security. Okay. And I just want to mention that uh, this was all known in the computational setting. Actually, in the computational setting, it was all known from the early 90s by work of uh, Dworkin and all on ZAPs and witness indistinguishable proofs into message. So again, the focus of this talk is on the statistical uh, setting, where we did not have such a result under any standard assumption besides kind of random oracle or uh, type assumptions uh, in two or even in three messages, actually. OK, so what's the starting point of this work? So this exact question of reducing, you know, taking uh, interactive protocol that's uh, secret 
and reducing interaction while maintaining secrecy was already asked in previous works, but in the computational setting. Okay, and we kind of follow that approach. That's kind of the starting point of our work. So let me tell you uh, what is done in these works because we're gonna, uh, the starting point is kind of similar. So they say, here's how they, they take uh, an, uh, so okay, we take an uh, uh, NP uh, complete problem. For example, uh, think of graph Hamiltonicity as an example. You can think of others. Uh, so, and take uh, Blum's three message protocol, the zero knowledge protocol for gra graph Hamiltonicity with only soundness half. Okay, so if soundness half, we have zero knowledge. Uh, soundness half is enough for now. Okay, so how does it work, this protocol, right? In the first message, the prover commits uh, to, to his graph to, to, uh, uh, with the Hamiltonian uh, cycle in there, uh, to permute graphs, and it doesn't really, the details are not important. The important thing is in the first message, there's a commitment to something, then the verifier sends a bit, a random bit, which is either zero or one, and based on this bit, the prover opens. Either he opens, uh, you know, everything, the permitted thing, or he opens only a Hamiltonian cycle. So that's kind of the high-level structure. The details are really not important. And here's the idea of how to convert it into a two-message protocol. So the idea is the following. Exactly a similar kind of in spirit to the previous talk. The idea is, you know what? How do we reduce interaction? Have the verifier send his bit ahead of time. Now, of course, if he sends it ahead of time, it won't be secure at all. So instead, what we do, we have him send it hidden. How? How do we hide it? We hide it using a two-message oblivious transfer protocol, okay, which I'll define in a minute. Uh, I'll explain in a minute what it is. Uh, but, uh, and I want to say this OT is a uh, specific, this, this kind of idea is known more generally as the peer heuristic or FHE heuristic. It was suggested originally by Bill Mayer and Wetzel in 99 in the multi-prover interactive proof setting. And with uh, Ran Raz, we kind of looked at it in the, from, in the interactive uh, proof setting. And in this work, in, because we're interested in secrecy, we don't use any peer scheme, but rather a symmetric peer scheme. And an OT is just an instantiation of that when we don't care about succinctness. So actually, this transformation, this idea of transformation, has been done before in the context of soundness, OK? Even before, in even the, um, before this computational secrecy. So what was shown in the work with Ranhas is that this is sound. This is sound, uh, assuming, but OK, so it's sound. However, you need to assume that the OT is more secure than the commitment. And that's why we need the super polynomial assumption and the, and the OT. So this is sound as long as the OT is harder to break than the commitment scheme. OK, good. And this was already in the work with Ran, so that's great. How about secrecy? Well, and this works. We work hard to, to show that it's also secret. Okay, so we get WI, secrecy, and more. Okay, but again, this was all computational. Now let's go to the statistical setting, which is a starting point of this work. Okay, so again, uh, we want to get a statistical secrecy. So what do we do? Well, we look at the Blum protocol, same Blum protocol, and we know how to make it statistically zero knowledge. How? Instead of using a statistically binding commitment, as was as Blum, Blum's, what you do is you use a statistically hiding commitment. So if the commitment is statistically hiding, this is known to be statistical zero knowledge. Again, with sound is half, but that can be amplified later. Okay. So we have a statistically uh, sound, a statistically uh, statistical zero knowledge argument. Now it's an argument because the commitment is only computationally binding. Uh, but and let's do the same thing. So that's what we propose. Just do exactly the same. Instead of sending the verifier's message in the third round, send it ahead of time. With the f so to get statistically hiding commitment, you need two two rounds or two messages. So send the uh, bit E ahead of time with the first message of the commitment. So again, COM1 and COM2 just uh, is the first two uh, rounds or messages of the commitment scheme. So the commitment scheme consists of two messages. The first is COM1, the second is COM2. Okay, so 
this is exactly the same. Use OT, which I'm going to define next. Send the bit in the first message, the bit E in the first message, kind of in a hidden way, and that's it. Okay, so very similar as before. And the main thing is, okay, is this still sound? And do we still get secrecy or statistical secrecy? Okay. So the first thing which follows pretty easily from previous, from the computational uh, work, is that secrecy is preserved. Uh, okay, what do I mean by preserved? Not preserved, you don't get zero knowledge in two messages, but we do get WI and more, which I'll say the more later. Okay, but we do at least get WI, statistical WI. And now I want to tell you a little bit about why we get statistical WI. So, I mean, previous work, the computational setting showed we got WI. And we use exactly the same, so what primitive do we use? Well, I, I claim that we don't get computational, we get already statistical. Why? Well, the commitment is statistical, so the verifier really doesn't, you know, it's, he gets perfect kind of uh, statistical security from the commitment. And the OT that we use, and was also used in the previous work, also offers statistical secrecy to the verifier, in the, in the verifier setting. So now let me define a, what um, a okay what the OT is or the, the OT that we use so the OT we use is one out of two OT so the there's a receiver in the center uh, the receiver wants to get one of these two messages n zero and one which one depends on the bit b so he want, he has a bit b and he wants to get n b okay the bit message and uh, the way it works he sends a message that depends on B, B is hidden, okay, and he gets back a message that depends on his message and an M0, M1. And from these two messages, it's only two messages, and from these two messages, he can recover the message he wants, which is MB, M sub B. And here's the security guarantees, that's important. So first, you get even a cheating, a polynomial time, a PPT cheating sender cannot cheat, cannot guess B. Okay, so he cannot guess the bit B. But importantly, even an unbounded receiver does not learn anything about the other message. So we do get statistical guarantee for a uh, malicious receiver. In our setting, the receiver is the verifier. Okay, so that's exactly what we want. Okay, uh, so we knew how to construct these from uh, DDH and from quadratic residuosity uh, and nth residuosity. But as I said, for our works and also the previous works, we needed, it's not enough for get to, to get security against a polynomial time cheating sender, we need against a uh, super polynomial time cheating sender, and therefore our results are under any of these assumptions, but with super polynomial hardness. Okay, with hardness that's more than breaking the commitment scheme that we use. Okay. So that's the primitive view we use, and because we get security here against an unbounded receiver, when we get this protocol, we get statistical security as well. And why it's WI, we, it's from the previous work, exactly as the computational setting. Quite interestingly, that's not where the hard part is. The hard part of this work is actually on soundness. So the real question is, why is this sound? And now let me take a little detour and tell you the problem is, so the idea of reducing interaction, um, uh, reducing you know, rounds in interactive protocols is an extremely interesting problem. Okay, there's a lot of research on it. And uh, we know, so there's, uh, broadly speaking, there's kind of two classes of ways of reducing interaction. One is using the Fiat Chamil heuristic, and one is using what I mentioned is the, the pure heuristic, or FHE heuristic. And here's what we know. For proofs, if you start with an interactive proof as opposed to an interactive argument, it works. Okay, under assumptions and so on, which I didn't want to mention here because it's not the focus, but if you're willing to some assumptions, you get security. Okay, great. What about when you try to, con to reduce interaction from an interactive argument? Doesn't work. So Fiat Chamil, there exists actually counterexamples, so negative results. And for the pure heuristic, we don't really have concrete counterexamples, but we have a lot of intuition and indication that that, well, in general, it's not sound. 
Okay, so actually, to date, we do not know how to reduce interaction from interactive arguments. Okay? Unless, you know, applying random oracle model. But without a, a relying on relatively standard assumptions, we do not know how to do that. Okay, now this is a problem for us because we start with the statistical zero knowledge, which is an argument, and I'm trying to reduce interaction from the argument, which you do not, I do not know how to do. So that's why the soundness is the issue here. Okay, and this seems like, you know, a dead end, in a sense. However, we managed to do it, and the main idea to get to do this is we use a special commitment scheme. Okay, so again, in general, I don't know that this is sound, this transformation for arguments. However, if you use a special commitment scheme, then we prove that it's sound. Now what is, so the main, that's kind of the main technical idea of this work, is to prove that you can go from interactive arguments, reduce interaction, if you choose the commitment scheme in a clever way. So what do we want from this commitment? How do we choose the, this commitment scheme? So it's, it's statistically hiding, of course. I have to have statistically hiding to get you know, my statistical uh, secrecy. However, I need statistically binding, or I need it to be a proof to get soundness. So the way we do it, we say, you know what? It's almost always going to be statistically hiding, but with some small probability, it won't, and in that case, it will be statistically binding. And the idea is you cannot distinguish between the two cases, and that's how we kind of get uh, the best of both worlds. So the statistically hiding will imply statistical secrecy. It's not actually here we don't get zero knowledge, but statistical uh, secrecy, and or you know we get that the original scheme is statistical zero knowledge, and the statistically binding will imply that the resulting two message is sound. And because you cannot distinguish between these two modes, you can't you know, break it uh, in one case and not the other. So that's kind of the high level intuition. However, I want to mention that's not all what we need. It's not enough. What we really need is that it's going to be extractable. And this is kind of technical in the proof. You know, you need some extractability. So I don't want to get the, into the details of why, because that's not very interesting. But what I, the, what the one thing I do want to kind of you to get from this talk is actually what we need, in a weird way, is a statistically hiding and extractable commitment scheme. And with this point, you should kind of be like, what? How can it be statistically hiding, meaning there's nothing there, but, they, but yeah, you can extract. That makes no sense. So again, but we, this is kind of what we do. Uh, and the way we do it is inspired by a previous work, a recent work of uh, Dakshita and Sahai, uh, Quran and Sahai. And what we construct is a two message a scheme, uh, a commitment scheme, that is statistically hiding and computationally binding but with some small probability, this commitment scheme switches to a statistically binding and extractable commitment scheme. And the committer cannot tell if, if, if he's in the binding mode or in the hiding mode. So maybe in the few minutes I have left, so that's kind of the main idea. In the few minutes I have left, actually I want to give you kind of a sense of what this commitment scheme is so you won't leave kind of in this magic. So it's very, very simple. And let me give you kind of the basic idea, okay, the basic uh, protocol, which is not really hiding, but it achieves hiding with probability half. Uh, and then we reamplify it. So what is the protocol? A committer wants to commit to a message M. What he does, he chooses two messages. One is M and one is completely random. And he mixes them, okay, he, in, he, he chooses a random R, one of them is going to be N, the other is going to be the random one. And what the receiver does, he gets one of them using an OT. Again, the OT comes, okay? So the receiver will send a bit, a random bit, and he will get one of, he'll get the R and one of these messages. 
If B equals R, he got the message. So it's not a good commitment scheme. It's not hiding at all. I mean, the probability has. If he didn't get R, he gets nothing, statistically. So this, I, and you probably feel like, OK, this is kind of a cheating. However, a, so again, this is only uh, 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 hiding with probability half. And with probability half, it's extractable. If B equals R, you can, he actually knows the message. But it seems not, not very uh, surprising. So the actual, uh, to get the actually statistically, uh, the actual commitment scheme, we do this uh, amplification. So instead of one message M, one uniform, there's K bits and 2K messages. Everything is random, subject to kind of some XORing being the message. And so I don't want to go into the details, actually, because of lack of time, because it's not, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll defer to the paper. Uh, but uh, you know, this is essentially our statistically hiding uh, uh, commitment scheme, which is going to be hiding with probability uh, uh, one minus two to the minus k, but two to the minus k probability, it'll be extractable. Okay, so let me wrap up. Uh, yeah. Okay, summary. So what did we get? So we constructed a two-message uh, statistical uh, witness indistinguishable argument uh, for all of N p. Uh, assuming uh, uh, super polynomial a uh, secure OT, which can be instantiated under the DDH, QR, or, or, or N3's duosity assumption. Uh, this is uh, the protocol. Uh, you take uh, the statistically high, the statistical zero knowledge version of Blum and apply the OT uh, a heuristic to it. And the main take home message is that. Actually, reducing interaction using this heuristic can be sound. It's not in general sound for arguments, but it can be sound. And by kind of taking your argument and flipping it to sometimes being proof, but sometimes being argument, you can gain uh, soundness. So one can think of, uh, I think it'll be interesting to get kind of more out of this, this uh, trick. And the way we do it is by constructing a statistical and extractable a commitment. And let me just say a word about the more. So beyond WI, we get statistical zero knowledge uh, with quasi-poly simulation. A, for example, we get adaptive soundness of this protocol. So X can be chosen even based on the first message. We still get soundness. A, we get statistically strong WI in the delayed input setting and more, which I don't have time to, to talk. Okay, thank you. We have time for questions. Can you explain again why is it why do you need this that with small probability the commitment scheme should be extractable? Yes. Why, yes. why is it sufficient that the probability is small? Yes. So the question is why is it uh, sufficient that the probability is, is small. And the reason is, even if it's small, if in that case, it, it, I'll give you the intuition, it's kind of hard to say precisely, but the intuition is, even if with small probability, uh, he can cheat, it, the fact, it means, what, when, what we show is that he can, with that probability, the two of the mind, you can set K, you can set that probability as you want. With that probability, he'll be able to distinguish. You can break the underlying uh, commitment, the modes. And so that's how, uh, because we know that in the other case, you can't cheat. And if this case you can cheat, then I know you were in that mode, not that mode. And so we rely heavily on the fact that these modes, you cannot distinguish between them. That's the high level answer. Okay, any more questions? So let's uh, thank you again. Thank you.